Hey guys, welcome back to Tis the Destiny. This is the second video in a series of videos regarding some upgrades that I uh, have done over the past couple of months. The previous video that I uploaded was about my internet. It was the first in, this, in a series of upgrades uh, that I did. I didn't actually make that clear in the video, but I'm gonna make it clear now. So I was at the factory in Kansas doing warranty work and that turned into upgrades. And so uh, they all kind of went hand in hand. So the uh, cellular antenna, getting that on the roof, at the same time I was all, also doing all the other roof upgrades made a lot of sense. So broad picture, I decided to put flex armor down on the roof. And it also made sense to change out the mini split air conditioning. I have mini split air conditioning if you didn't know. I had ceiling cassettes. You can see where the old one was up there behind me on the roof, ceiling rather. And I changed that out to wall mount unit. So that removed a lot of penetrations and nonsense up, up on the roof. So we deleted those. That gives me more space for solar. Then put flex armor down on top of that, do my solar thing. Uh, and I'm also, um, I also have a new hitch. So these are all be separate videos. The flex armor will be a video. The hitch will be a video. You saw the cellular video, and we're going to talk about solar today. I think that's it for videos. So we're going to start by showing you the old solar system. 3,350 watts, 10 335 watt panels. You can see there's some gaps in the coverage there as a result of the mini split cassettes, and there's gaps down the middle. So we swap that out to a new system that'll give us 5,000 watts instead. You might be wondering, why is 3,350 watts not enough? Well, it's not enough if you're running your air conditioning, even a mini split when it's above 90 degrees. And it's not enough in the winter when the sun is low in the sky, the days are short, and the nights are long. Here I'm in the factory, removing the old panels and exposing the gross, disgusting desert baked on dirt and all kinds of nonsense on the roof but that was the moment of crazy pulling the old panels so here you can see the roof penetrations after I've cleaned off everything else on the left we've got the plumbing vent the white thing we've also got a small bathroom vent which I did replace with a bigger vent that's the black round thing and on the right in that wood area there's a hole that goes down that is now two inches in diameter and that is where my cellular antenna wires go down and where my solar wires go down. Use a better sense of the plumbing vent and the new fan on the left and the electrical junction box that's covering the hole for where the wires will go down. This is the underside of the hole. I've removed some of the ceiling material and the wall material to get at that hole and route the wires. That was actually not too difficult to do. This is that same cabinet area wires. You can see the cellular antenna wires coming down through the hole. And you can see where some other wires are. Actually, the red and black wires back there are the old solar wires that I reused. So just continuing to run down the side of that area, run straight into the basement, and that's it. So it's a relatively easy to route everything using the existing holes and, and wires. Next up, we encase the roof in flex armor and a UV, white UV coating. If you don't know what flex armor is, we'll cover that in another video, but here is the roof being prepared. And here I'm dry fitting the strut channel on the roof using the bolts that are provided by the flex armor system. So I worked with the installer to get the bolts located where I needed them to secure the strut channel down on top of the new flex armor roof once the roof was ready. So that gives me a very solid connection into the roof itself for the strut and it is leak proof and I will never have to worry about those again. Here you can see the solar panels being laid out and mostly wired sitting on top of the strut the three visible protrusions and there's one more which is the vent pipe for the tanks that's underneath one of the panels but that's it everything else on the roof is solar panels except for what you see there 
couple of close-up views of the installation, showing you the underside and the mounting. It's a little hard to see, but that's kind of the point. All the panels are installed in this photo. You can ignore the, the white stuff right at the roof line. That is the flex armor wrap and not having been fully finished yet. But you can see that the visual impact of the panels, as big as they are and sitting on top of strut, is basically invisible. So that came out better than I had hoped. I'm just voiceovering this. I don't didn't like the way the original recording came out, but I wanted to show the combiner box by EcoWorthy since I didn't really get a good close-up of that in any of the photos or the other videos that I took. So this is their newer product. That the older product uh, was a metal case and bigger. It had more components in it that were actually unnecessary, especially for today's solar panels. But you can see that this is a nice, robust plastic case with a good waterproof seal. This is a six-way combiner, so there are six fuses. There's a cutoff breaker and there is service protection in there, which I'm not using. So I just wired the panels straight into this box. I had to you know, make custom extensions for the MC4 connectors, but this way the panels are fully serviceable, removable, swappable, whatever, you know, just MC4 connectors directly in. And I forget the ratings of this box. I'll put a link in the description, but it can handle more than 5,000 watts, clearly. And uh, I think you can put either 25 or 30 amp fuses uh, in there. It's going to depend on the specs for your solar panel. My panels have a rating for 20 amp fuses um, when you've got them in parallel. So that's what I've got in there. And that's how they're all connected up on the roof. And then from there, I've just got a single set of four gauge wires going down to my solar charge controller, which I had to upgrade. It was a, it was a Victron 250 70, which was 250 volts, 70 amps out at a 48 volt nominal. And I needed more than 70 amps my voltage on these panels ended up being lower than my old panels, so I was able to go down to the 150 volt solar charge controller and 100 amps on the output, which gives me more than 5,000 watts of capacity. So that's the wiring perspective for you. Just a quick flyover of the finished product. Nothing but solar. So I'm gonna put a little moment of truth up on the window. I'm producing over 5,000 watts in the right conditions. Normally on a flat roof in the summer, uh, in the middle of the U.S., you're going to get about 80% of the rated capacity, and that's been what I've been getting. So the panels are performing fine, just like my old panels were, but in the right conditions, you'll actually make over the rated capacity. So that's sort of stress testing the system, proving that everything is working as designed. And sure enough, you can see uh, that I'm producing more than 5,000 watts in the uh, in this in the uh, screenshot here i've actually gone up to i think 5400 or, or maybe even up to 5500 uh, watts of, uh, of production um, for brief periods of time depending on where the clouds are in the sky so that's working great i'm really happy with the way this came out i'm going to be smart about checking the panels on the roof uh, every time i travel until i get comfortable with the way I've installed them. I want to make sure the, the struts are secure. I want to make sure the panel mounts are secure, nothing's vibrating loose and that sort of thing. I used nylon lock nuts to hold the strut down onto the roof in addition to actual um, split wa lock washers. So that should provide me a good vibration uh, proof way to secure the struts. I've got standard bolts and split lock split lock washers uh, holding the uh, the clamps uh, down for the panels themselves and those are uh, nice and tight but i'm going to check those on occasion until uh, i get uh, you know more comfortable that i'm not going to have panels flying off the roof but so far so good i did add a cross member um, between the two runs of strut at the front of the rv i didn't apparently get a photo of that but that's to help prevent wind from getting underneath the panels as I'm driving down the road. So that should help provide some additional security against uh, basically hurricane force winds being driven underneath the panels every time I'm driving. So anyway, that's really it for uh, for my solar upgrade video here. I didn't cover the rest of my system. Uh, I can briefly state that uh, I've got 28 kilowatt hours of battery, which 
um, is the equivalent of, it's a 48 volt battery, so it's not really fair to talk about amp hours directly, but it's the equivalent of 2200 amp hours uh, at, uh, on, a, on a 12 volt system. So imagine uh, 2200 amp hour uh, you know, Battleborn batteries, for example, uh, but I custom made a 48 volt battery. I have two Victron uh, Quattros that are 5 kVA each or 4,000 watts each operating in split phase mode, which is required for the mini split to operate. So I've got plenty of power there. Uh, and I've got that one solar charge controller that's handling all 5,000 watts of panels on the roof. I have a 48 to 12 converter, and that uh, basically keeps a 12-volt, uh, 100-amp-hour SOK lithium battery charged um, for any of the high-power, temporary high-power 12-volt consumption devices like the jacks and the slides. You know, those will use 100, 120 amps of juice, uh, and I didn't want to put in enough converters to handle that so I just have a 30 amp converter keeps it charged and the 30 amp converter is enough for most of my 12 volt loads um, with the notable ups, uh, exception of the jacks and the slides so that's all been working out great for the last uh, two years that that whole system has been been wonderful so all I really did was just change out my solar so all right guys that's it if you have any questions feel free to leave comments below um, and we'll see you on the next one take care